In this video, we'll show that ridge regression, like least squares, has a closed form solution. So let me again write down ridge regression's objective. Okay, now I'm gonna take the gradient, and again, I'm gonna take it one component at a time and then stack them together as a big vector. Where here again, uh, this guy is the jth feature vector. So let's, uh, let's stack them. Okay, so all I did was just distribute, uh, distribute the x straight through. Okay, now we know that at lambda star, the gradient is zero. So now we can just go ahead and solve it. Let's take the inverse of that big matrix there. And there you go, that's our solution. So ridge regression has a closed form solution and um, that makes it kind of an ideal algorithm to use in practice, because you don't have to worry about non-convex optimization, you don't even have to really worry about optimization at all. You only have to worry about inverting that matrix. Now, the first time I saw this, I thought, well, this reminds me of something familiar. It looks like something I've seen before from numerical analysis, and in particular, I was thinking about the pseudo-inverse. Doesn't it really, doesn't it look like a pseudo-inverse there? Um, and so, I was thinking about that and just trying to remember what, what it was for. So I just want to put that up on the screen for you so that if you have seen it before, you, um, you, you, get, you, you kind of understand the similarities um, between them. Okay, so I'll just put a little note here. I'll put that one up at the top. Okay, so this guy is from the 1970s. And it looked like this. Okay, so you could think about the pseudo inverse as the solution to ridge regression, but sending the regularization parameter down to zero. Now remember the pseudo inverse was designed to help with numerical stability because they couldn't invert this, you know, sometimes you can't invert that matrix. So by adding the additional, uh, this additional term over here, it allows you to invert it in a stable way. And so then, um, because this, this guy was ill-defined, right, there's many, many solutions to it, you take the one that's the limit as the regularization parameter goes down toward zero. Okay, but for us, we, we don't want to send that regularization parameter down towards zero because we don't want to overfit. So we're going to use, we're going to use this one here, right there. Okay, now there's one more thing I wanted to tell you about, which is the idea of um, regularization paths. So even though we don't want to necessarily send the regularization parameter down to zero, we might, know when, we might want to explore what happens when we use different regularization parameters to see what the solutions look like. You know, we want to look at this lambda vector and see how it changes as we change the regularization. And so that's what regularization paths are for. So I'm just going to draw this as a picture, uh, and I'll just draw each of the lambda j's and how it changes as the regularization parameter changes. Okay, so you can think about 
um, all of the lambdas being zero over here on the left, but when are all the lambdas zero? They're zero when the regularization parameter C is large. So this plot is kind of inverted from what you would think. Like it's not the regularization parameter going from small to large, it's going from large to small. Okay, so all of the, all of the lambdas are zero right here. And now let's just draw what might happen. I'm, obviously, I don't have a real data set in front of me, but I'll, I'll show you what, what might happen if I draw them. Yeah, so that should give you some idea what happens. Um, so if you, if you actually adjust that regularization parameter, you see that sometimes the lambdas go up and down. Sometimes they just stay at zero. Sometimes they go all the way up. <laughs> and sometimes they go all the way down. So you never know what's going to happen. Anyway, so if you, if you do this, though, you really get a sense of, of how the lambdas change as the regularization parameter changes. All right, thank you.